Welcome to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barry Robinson and friends. Seen on the internet, 24 hours, 7 days a week. To view our catalog of shows, please go to YouTube, type in, in capital letters, R-B-R-I-M-O. I want to welcome our millions of viewers worldwide and especially our very talented co-hosts. We have Mr. Henry Hatter. Hi, Ron. Hi. We have Miss Jackie Williams. Hi, Ron. We have Miss. Denise Smith Allen. Hi, Ryan. I want to welcome our millions of viewers worldwide. Governor Snyder versus Flint, Michigan. This is a two part series. Michigan Republican Governor Rich Snyder was the architect that created the genocide non infecting thousands of human beings in Flint, Michigan, around the state and the world. Who wants to who wants to be first on this uh, on this uh, very caustic uh, crisis that Flint, Michigan is is uh, in, is 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 enduring? I think the Ron, the first thing you did was politicize the argument. We don't need a politicized argument. We need to no. This is not politicizing you anything. This is this this, this is the truth. He is he okay. a Republican or what? <laughs> Yes, but, he is. Okay. But, but we know how we feel and we know how the people feel. Okay, but the people the out there the, Flint and around the state. The people feel out there the Republican. The people okay? out there don't know. The argument. Whether he's a Republican, the Republican Democrat. The argument. Okay. Uh <laughs> independent, uh whatever. Right. Regardless. Okay, yeah. regardless. I'm naming names uh and I don't care who, who, uh, uh who I have to who I who I have to name is that simple? Uh, and I don't I don't mind that, but with the argument we can drift into those and and not focus upon it. We have a problem to solve, and it's going to take exactly. all of the people at the table. And it was a Republican problem. Okay, well let me let's let's shift gears here and let's talk about some solutions. Right. What are we going to do to fix this? And we already know that we have someone in place who has not been honest. He's destroyed our trust. Regardless to what he is, Republican, Democrat, Independent, he's destroyed the trust of the people who elected him. Okay? He was here to serve. He did not serve us well. So there'll probably be some uh, movement towards maybe him not finishing out his term. And perhaps, you know, if justice is really served, perhaps he may even end up... Um, perhaps going to jail or prison behind this because this was not something that uh, just happened. There were a series of missteps and we talked about that on an earlier show, but this, there was a series of missteps. But if it was a company, the buck stops at its leader. It stops <clears throat> at the CEO. And so he is the CEO of this state and he has failed people here in this state. And so with that, I think that you know we'll probably you know, have some further discussion about it. But let's start there. That's one of the solutions is to get rid of those persons that we can't trust. Exactly. As a retired corrections officer, if Snyder was to go to prison, I think I'd come out of retirement. <laughs> okay. You know, three hots in a cot, dude. <laughs> I think one of the problems, um, like you said, what we're trying to do is resolve having people in place because Snyder had no problem firing um, several people. But I think we need to just be honest. You know, your hands are not clean. So there are seven petitions currently for him to be recalled um, that are, I think one has been denied, but the other six are existing. So there are some steps because he still has not given us a plan of correction as of today. I mean, he's made some appointments. I mean, the first appointment we talked about in the first show was that he had a PR person that he first hired. And then now he's hired some nurses and he's hired some doctors and some teachers. Um, but that still is not enough for such a huge problem. That's not enough. We need a plan. We need to know when are we going to start digging? When are we going to start replacing the pipes? How are we going to relocate the people? 
we have not gotten that plan. And I think Rachel Maddow showed, uh, Tate lived here last week, was saying that people want to know where we're going from here. They're lost. We don't have a leader because they're not giving us direction. And he's not giving us direction besides, you know, he's throwing us a bone every once in a while. This is what we're going to do. All this money that is being funneled through Flint, we should have enough money to start something. Absolutely. I agree with that. Now, let me get be, be clear on one point. All right. He mentioned uh, uh, that $28 million. Now, I've been hearing t well, this morning, is he allocating an additional $28 million? Are we still talking about that one time? Uh, I think it's the million? first initiative because we never got that. You know, okay. he just had to get it approved. I think it just got approved. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The $28 million just was approved. So it still has not. Mm -hmm. And then where is it going to be, um, you know, who is going to be the repository of this type of funding when it comes in on a local level? You know, it's very um, unfortunate that we kind of like fly the plane while we're building it. And, and that's what continues to help with that distrust. We should have a plan and it doesn't take six months to develop a plan. You know, people are concerned about the rusted pipes. And so there should be, if we have to get um, the Army Corps of Engineers in here, um, they could come up and tell us some recommendations. And again, it shouldn't take six months for them to do it. These are things that are immediate because in the meantime, we're still um, using this water. We have a lot of people still don't have a choice in terms of bathing and that kind of thing. They're using the water. Okay, so we're continuing to be contaminated. And it's just totally unacceptable that we should just be kind of out here without a plan and a strategic plan that it should be able to have dates of implementation and that's what I'm saying we need to have that and um, I did hear earlier that um, uh, you know we did have some people come in from other uh, organizations and there was a call for making sure that the emergency manager law is dismantled that's a solution mm -hmm. right that's a yes. solution because that should never happen to people who have our law-abiding citizens who are registered voters and elect their uh, their officials whoever they may be and if they're not doing their jobs the process is that you vote them out right okay and if they're doing something illegal that's uncovered and they are penalized for that but you don't come in and just usurp the people's power and then expect you know you've got dirty hands now You've allowed the situation to occur. You should not get away with that. Do the, the democracy was destroyed. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Democracy was destroyed, and I thought that this nation was built on democracy. Mm -hmm. But I guess then uh, that was a lie. You spoke about <laughs> the Army Corps of Engineers uh, coming to Flint. I, I just hope that it's not the same ones that were involved in <laughs> Katrina. <laughs> No, no. Right, no. right, right. No, we now, on the that. Rachel Maddow show, they did show, they did have some professionals there. They were um, the UAW, I mean, the union um, plumbers. Mm -hmm. And he did give an expert, you know, he was saying that this job is big, but it can be done. And he said that they can do a street a week. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're, he, he said they're ready. They haven't received any calls because what I'm hoping is with this um, situation being like it is, I hope that we can benefit from the people that we have here, that you utilize the people here. Mm -hmm. Don't go and employ all the people around the United States and miss out on the people in Flint that are suffering. Right. Pour the money into the people who have stayed here and been faithful to Flint. Mm -hmm. And so employ the engineers and the plumbers and the construction people that are here in Flint versus signing contracts to people out of state. Exactly. You know, I heard something uh, um, recently that uh, they, now I don't know if it was a state agency or federal agency or what, <coughs> That they want to give up, uh, they want to buy people's homes for ten thousand dollars. I had not heard oh, that. Yeah, one. I had not heard. It's all theater to me. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know, Ron, uh, but even for ten thousand dollars, who in the hell is going to buy a who's going to who's going to buy a home in Flint at this point? All right. I'm hoping that Flint will you know will survive this that was this, my this, 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 this crisis and you know and because uh, this is you know Flint is resilient mm -hmm. all right 
A lot of good people here. A lot of good people here. And okay. I'm concerned about the kids who live here and, and their future. Absolutely, absolutely, and, absolutely. Uh, and, and I'm not so concerned about the governor's future as I am the future of the people who live here, who mm -hmm. we have an obligation to assure that they can live their lifetimes out with some prosperity and uh, some expectations for good health. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> I, and I'm not dwelling on anything political, but only on those fundamental things that I believe to be of importance to us as human beings mm -hmm. and uh, our collective community. <clears throat> and I, I would hope that we would stay away from the minutia. I can deal with the problem as long as we're away from the minutia. There are many things that I don't know about the Flint water problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm just afraid to say it because I serve on one of the agencies, on one of the um, environmental issues that govern the, um, uh, the DEQ. Mm -hmm. So, and I have a meeting on Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, by the way. And I'm sure that we'll talk a lot about the flat water problem. But didn't they, they also drop the ball? Mm -hmm. How did they do it? How did they do that? Who no dropped the ball? Yeah, the DEQ, because they didn't do corrosion control. They well, said that right. should have been the first step into, trend, you know, they should have did a testing they, they site. Should have, they should have done that because that's standard water quality right. practice. Right. But the way they did that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were just uh, frustrated. I don't know. But somebody dropped the ball. And uh, nobody will step forward and say, hey, we dropped the ball. Well, this is what I've advocated, you know. Let's clear the books, you know what I mean? Let's start fresh if, you, if, 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 if we can. Tell what you know, all right? Expose uh, 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 the people that you know you helped in this mess. Tell, tell, tell what you know. And uh, you know, and I, I think about this all the time, about the stigma that our kids have on them who live in Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, the murder capital of the world. Kids can't learn. They're underfoot. They're undereducated. They are uh, felons. Mm -hmm. uh, so look at the challenges that they have. And yet we go out and we pile on top of that the sled problem that will induce them down to Neanderthals, the way the world looks at it. And that there's too much of that. And <clears throat> by the way, there, there's evidence out there to support what, this claim, that people who have been exposed to lead, and lead accumulates in the fatty tissue of the liver, right? Fatty tissues of the liver, okay? Now, with diet over time, it can leach out lead to close to respectable levels. But we're not considering that. We're all stirring people up and scaring the heck out of people. And when we ought to have strategies out there that pertain to what I just said, so that people are better informed, so that we can protect our kids and create the kind of uh, uh, restoration to their their future that they need to have in the city of Flint. Well, Henry, you, you make a good point about educating. And the thing that <clears throat> I think has to happen, for one, we've got U of M, and they've been having a series mm -hmm. of educational workshops to help people understand what lead is doing to the body as a, an infant, um, you know, school-aged children, adults, and the elderly. So it's incumbent upon us to take advantage of that. And for those who are not able to get to the schools, then there should be, if there's mobile units or whatever mm -hmm. the, the case may be, to go out into the community and right. start to set up these little small co coffee clatches or whatever you want to call it to help people understand this problem. Because if you don't understand it, you can, you know, it, 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 it can become mushroomed into something that you, you know, it just totally overwhelms you. But if you have people in place to kind of give you step by step, right. what can I do? What can I can I drink it? Do can I boil it? Whatever those little questions are that people have, those things should be 
um, written out somewhere. There should be something online. There, you know, just multiple avenues of providing education for people. And then those kids who have been exposed, there should be some kind of funding set up so that they can mm -hmm. have their educational needs met, their health needs met. Right. And this is not something of their doing, so they should not have to necessarily be responsible for the full, you know, for the full amounts of things. You know what I mean? Sure. There should be some some kind of a sliding scale or free um you know materials and things like that available, available. to people so that they can um you know, you know take care of their kids providing those i have a tenant and i was just really <clears throat> sad when she gave me this information the lawyers are providing this information so the lawyers are coming into these mm -hmm. communities yeah. and they're giving Looking them the worst business. the worst scenario yeah. because she was telling me that she's going because um she's filing a case and i explained to her that a lot of the lead you know people that have been exposed to the lead you don't see the results for a long time right so if you're seeing your child act out yesterday and it just started i mean you know that probably is not the lead but because you have the attorneys coming in and they they see dollars mm -hmm. you know and, and it's just like you know when the big thing for ADD came out everybody get a check for your child you know I I don't very often agree with Henry, but in this, I will, because you want to fight for the reputation of your child. If your child is not injured or whatever, you don't want to put a label on them to tell them that you know you're not going to be able to have the intelligence that you need to have. But mm -hmm. we have these people that are feeding into this, exactly. and they should, but they should be guarded by people giving so much information that it overpowers the ones that are coming in. Right. Exactly. It would take uh, an act of Congress to give us the kind of information that you just asked for because it has to pass through so many agencies and they all have to agree upon it until it reaches the point and I believe it's the World Health Organization or mm -hmm. our, our own state uh, authorized health organization, the national organization. They all have to agree on it mm -hmm. because if they're uh, Parts of, of uh, the directions or process or, or procedures that others don't agree with, you will still have 50% of nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, so, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so, I, uh, it's our haste to, to make something happen right now. That ain't going to happen. It takes a lot of study to, do, to give you what you want uh, to have happen with. Uh, the situation with water, flat water and the lead contamination. Uh, we, we have to look at some baselines too. We have to look at the lead that's contained in adults, the ages of the adults and stratify that. Mm -hmm. And then you can see what the impact is. And, um, and you can look at also how lead has leached out of some people because of their diet and so on and so forth, which gives you an avenue to the future to deal with young people. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I heard, uh, well, actually all of us have mentioned this, you know, you know, people are in an uproar, okay, about this uh, uh, Flint uh, poison water crisis, but you know, our history tells us power gives up nothing without agitation, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. You can sit and talk and talk and talk all you want. That's good. That's okay? good. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if these people, for whatever reason, aren't interested in what in your conversation, they're not going to do anything. I agree. Okay? So, look at our history. Okay? The Civil Rights era. Um, uh, other, 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 other uh, um, situations. If it weren't for people uh, confronting the powers that be, okay, in many cases things probably wouldn't change, mm -hmm. okay? So we have to, it's like, it's like a baby, okay? He's hungry and he's crying. What do you do? You feed him. Take care of his needs, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. and, this, and, and, and this is what the citizens of Flint are trying to accomplish. Hey, we're suffering. We need help. Uh, um, uh, I'm tired of drinking water that looks like it just come out of a swamp, mm -hmm. okay? And it smells and it stinks. 
I'm tired of, uh, 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 I've seen I don't know how many uh, interviews uh, on television where people are full of, full of lesions and stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. Come on, this, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you would experience, okay, in a third world country. This is the kind of stuff you see on uh, CNN, or, or, you know, in, in a third world country. Right. Mm -hmm. Not here in America, the most powerful and, more, and, and, and most um, um, richest country in the world. Right. It's, a, a, it's, it's abomination, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Look at Time Magazine. They did the uh, photo shoot of the little boy. And they showed a picture of him before, and they showed a picture of him after. He has all kinds of abrasions on his face from the water, and um, she has to watch his body because he has such a reaction to the water. So when people downplay that, you can't do that because you don't know. These people are living this every day. They're living this every day, so we can't downplay. And then I was told on Friday that the Mexican community were not aware. I mean, because all the information has come out in English. So do you not know that the ones that are not very fluent in English, um, somebody was dropping off water and they shared this with us. Mm -hmm. They weren't fluent in English, so they didn't know that they shouldn't be drinking the water. They didn't know that they, because they didn't know. Uh -huh. And um, so when they went there, these people were in tears when they told them, you should not be drinking this water because nothing has come out um, to them where they can comprehend it. So we have dropped the ball in being able to get the information out correctly to get it out to all facets of our community so we have dropped the ball so it, it's not about uh, prosecuting um, Snyder it's about helping the people that you have hurt Absolutely. these people are hurt mm -hmm. and you need to give them answers and, and they don't want to hear a whole bunch about you know you're gonna you're out here for them because had it not been exposed on MSNBC I want to know what Snyder actually have come out and said okay there's a problem because he knew about the problem last year mm -hmm. and before so he wasn't willing to come and step up and say anything but once it started being aired on TV so I disagree with what you're talking about and I agree with what Ron is saying sometimes you have to go to the mountain and you have to yell so they can hear you we have a problem because we tried to talk about it locally they they did the petitions they did the marches they did the rallies they did all of that nobody listened to them but every time we turned around we had all these specialists telling us that there's nothing wrong with the water they're mm -hmm. toasting to the water there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with the water we're drinking the water mm -hmm. then they come back and say well there is something wrong with the water so why don't we trust them because we can't trust them because well, they're not no, no hang on now, if you remember Jeff Wright was here and you uh, toasted to the water yes, too. yes I did and, I still and you should be tested I still, <laughs> I still drink the water everywhere I go if I go in a restaurant I drink the water but it's not the same everybody is doing the same thing people are drinking this water at home there's no way you can get without it we're creating a junk pile of plastic here that we can't even get rid of. We are already and addressing that addressing issue. Them. They're addressing they're that addressing. issue. It's not that simple. But they're addressing but it, a, Henry. A, there's a major issue. We're creating a lot of problems that are simple. They're donating be, all kinds uh, of receptacles okay. to now, get the plastic um, out. But I want to make continue. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, Henry. But um, but go ahead. I'll let you. No, I want. <laughs> No, I wanted to uh, go back to what Jackie was talking about. Uh, we have um, some folks here who um, were not able to get the water, some of it because of language barriers, but the other thing is because some of them were undocumented workers and did not feel compelled to get outside. Whose because fault is that? Well, listen to this. Okay. They're still human beings, okay. okay? Undocumented or not, still human beings that deserve water. They deserve mm -hmm. water, Henry, okay? Yeah. Now, if you want to ship them back or whatever you think you want to do, <laughs> right. that's, a, that's later. But right now, they still need a drink of water, and they should have a drink and of water. everybody believes that. We believe you on that. Okay, well, that's, yeah. th that was the point I was trying to make. Okay. 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 <clears throat> but, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think um, that we need to uh, continue scaring the heck out of people here because they're going to drink the water anyway. They have no other... They're, they're going to use the water anyway. There's no, they have no options. Yes, mm -hmm. they do. What? 
We're, they're deli they have so many water, I believe, every yeah, church. How many flight. gallons of water does an average person in the household use a day? I don't know how many gallons, See, but they're, they're but let me just tell you what they're doing. So you so let me just update you. Every church almost in Flint are giving out water. When we were coming to the studio today, they're flagging us down on the street to tell us we have water. So they have bottled water for baths, they have bottled water for cooking, they have bottled water for anything else. They have bottled water. We have I mean, they have so much water that has come in because stars have donated water. Keisha Cole was at a site on Fifth Ward yesterday donating water. I mean, she was handing out water herself. So all the stars have come, but it seems as though we've come. A lot of people have come to the table more than our own governor, and it's his fault. I thought I'd throw that in there. Okay. You know, water, is, gonna get water, is, a, water is a human rights issue. And it sure is. Okay. Uh, everybody needs water. Why don't Regardless. we give it to some of the people, the rest of the world, like the kids who were... Hey, no, you can't make me believe that you're that cold-hearted. Uh, well, I'm not talking about white. Don't okay. I don't we're talking about Flint. We we're talking about, about Flint, Flint, Michigan. You said the Mexicans, and you said okay. the people here. We're, and we don't really care about. We care. We care. People. We care about people. And we're talking about the residents of Flint, whether, like I said, documented or not, they're still residents right. here. And I so, agree with and you. so, we want to make sure That's that my the point. yeah, and the the point still being, and this is a human right. You should have water. You know, sometimes food may not be an option, but water is definitely, you got to have water. Okay. So, I mean, why are we, you know, sitting here thinking that this is a problem that shouldn't be discussed? We don't want to necessarily politicize it, but it is a political thing because of the politicians who made, politicians who've made mistakes. But the people who govern the city are responsible. And you're going to end up with the same kind of situation in the next event, in no. the next millennium, no. the no. next decade. No, because you should hope, hopefully you'll have some measures in place that so that you will not allow this thing to happen. Number one, emergency manager. We shouldn't have one of those. Get we don't need those. All of them. I can see us having some financial help. Right. Okay, to help manage the book. Mm -hmm. But why, after why that. Why does Flint need a Financial I'm manager and say if Lansing, doesn't if, if, if Lansing doesn't because that was a judgment call. That was a call that someone in Lansing, name Governor Snyder, made a decision. We've he made, made a decision, and then he had, had about five had, or six people. We've had financial managers for, for twenty years. Not in Flint. Yes, we have. For twenty years. We've no, I don't agree with that. I don't agree Lansing, with that, Henry. If Lansing would have given these that. cities, all right. Their profit sharing, perhaps maybe we wouldn't be in Ed, these Ed, in these pro Ed, in this Ed, in, in Ed these Kurtz. situations. Ed Kurtz. Ed Kurtz. Ed Kurtz. The first. Two thousand eleven. Yeah, it hasn't yeah. been twenty years. With that, this has been a great conversation. I hope our uh, uh, listening audience uh, enjoyed it. Our viewing audience as well. Uh, at this time, we must bring the In My Opinion show to a close. I want to thank Mr. Henry Hatter, Mrs. Jackie Williams, Mrs. Denise Smith Allen, and our very uh, great technical staff. This is Ronald Barry Robinson, friend, saying. Till next time, stay focused.